In this session, we will cover bacterial gene prediction, meaning that we want to take genomic DNA and predict where protein coding genes are located. So we want to start with bacterial genomic DNA. Now often this is freshly sequenced DNA from a species of bacteria that had not yet been sequenced. Then we will use a program called Glimmer, which will help find the locations of CDSs, or coding regions, within that piece of DNA. The output will include what strand of DNA that that particular gene is located on and on which reading frame it is on. We will use another algorithm called FGenesB. That output, in addition to strand and reading frame, will also include the gene's operon status. In other words, what mRNA includes those particular protein coding genes. A quick note about bacterial genes. Recall that as opposed to eukaryotic genes, bacterial genes can be polycystronic, meaning that an mRNA often has more than one coding gene on it. However, like some eukaryotes, some mRNAs do only have one. So some have one and some have more, where eukaryotes usually only have one. No introns. That makes bacterial gene prediction a lot less complicated than eukaryotic. There are six reading frames that protein coding genes can be on. So if this is a particular sequence of double-stranded DNA, recall that only one strand will be in the database. Look at A, B, and C. A, B, and C represent the potential amino acid patterns. Remember that a triplet in DNA is sufficient to code for one amino acid. So if we start at the first position, we get the pattern M, K, W, V, W, A. If we started at the second position, we would get stop codon, that's the star, S, C, G. If we started at the third position, we would get E, V, G, V. If we started at the fourth position, it would be a K like we have on the first line, followed by W, V. We would be back to the same pattern. Likewise, now on the bottom strand, now we are reading right to left. Strand D would be L, G, R, C, and then S, A, A, A on line E. There are six different places to start a reading frame to start a coding region. An open reading frame is defined as a start codon followed by a stop codon in the same reading frame. That means you could have a potential coding region there. Okay, now again our goal. We take genomic DNA, often freshly sequenced, and then we are going to predict the location of protein coding genes on that genomic DNA. For this exercise, we will use a stretch of Prevotella amnii DNA. Prevotella amnii is a bacterium that was sequenced in 2013. One of the algorithms we will use is Glimmer. Glimmer is a downloadable program that also has a web server at NCBI. Another is FGenesB. FGenesB has a web server with multiple training sets. It is at softberry.com, so www.softberry.com. And when you go to that address, you can find the programs in the upper right corner. Okay, so here is the DNA sequence, Prevotella amnii. DSM-23384 is the strain of bacteria. It is a whole genome shotgun sequence, so that is a partial DNA sequence. It is pretty long, so we are going to copy that. Here is the NCBI Glimmer site. You see microbial genomes. You see there is a link to download Glimmer. Glimmer does very well on mainframe computers that work well with very large sequences. It is a little more adaptable with training sets, so the downloadable version is actually a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to paste this sequence. If it's a complete genome, then it would be circular, but this is not the complete genome. This is linear. I'm going to choose linear for topology and then run Glimmer. Here are my results. You see that ORF 0000134567 8. There was a second open reading frame, but I guess that doesn't predict to be a protein. So it's predicting from, it says 310 to 161, and that sounds backwards, but the reading frame is minus 2, so it's on the complementary strand, and it would read right to left. So the start codon is at position 310, and the stop codon is at position 161. And then the open reading frame 3 is 2119 to 410, and then the next four genes are all plus strand genes. The numbers go up, 2329 to 2808. And then the final open reading frame, ORF 00008, 
is on the complementary strands, so it has predicted seven coding regions from this particular DNA. Okay, let's look at SoftBerry. SoftBerry has a recently redesigned front page. You go to the top right corner to run programs online, and we want the third one down, operon and gene finding in bacteria. We see some algorithms here, and the one we want is FGenes B. Now let's paste in that DNA sequence. Uh, notice that it says choose closest organism. These algorithms run on training sets, so it's good to have a closely related organism. But since Prevotella is not on this menu, scroll down, it's not there. We're going to go to the, well, you'll see that archaea come first and then the bacteria. This is a bacterial sequence, so we will want to click bacterial generic and then process. The output here is a little bit more complex, but a little bit more complete. You see that there are seven coding regions predicted, just like Glimmer, so the results look pretty close. But you also see TU and OP, so let me explain what the difference there is. Recall that some mRNAs contain more than one coding region, but some do only contain one. The ones that only contain one coding region are referred to here as transcription units. In this case, here is a predicted plus strand gene for the first open reading frame from 2 to 274. That was a little different. Let's flip back to Glimmer. Glimmer predicted 310 to 161 on the minus strand. F genes B predicted 2 to 274 on the plus strand. So that is the first predicted location from F genes B. The second is from 410 to 2065 on the minus strand. So that is another mRNA with a single coding region. And that's relatively close in this prediction. 2119 to 410, this was 410 to 2065. So it only differs in the start codon. Now finally, here's an operon. OP for operon, and there is 1, 2, 3, and 4 to the right of the OP. And this is the first coding region on the mRNA. This is the second, this is the third, and this is the fourth. So here, ORFs, or ORFs, three through six, are all predicted to be coded for by the same mRNA. If you look to the left of the OP, you see numbers. That is how many mRNAs there are. So see at the top, this is the first mRNA. This is the second mRNA. These four come from the third mRNA. And finally, the last gene, the last coding region, comes from the fourth mRNA. That's how to read that notation. So there are four transcription units, meaning four mRNAs. One of those is an operon that contains four coding regions. So we see four mRNAs, but seven coding regions. Now, note also that the predicted proteins are in FASTA format below. So if I wanted to say, take this first coding region from the operon and ask, well, what is the predicted protein sequence? I can go down to gene 3, and I can take that sequence, and maybe I can do a blast search and find other proteins, maybe from other bacteria, to get an idea of maybe what exactly that gene might be. Now, let's compare our operon results to Glimmer. 2305 to 2808. Well, we got 2329 to 2808. That's pretty close. Again, the start codon differs a little bit. 2826 to 3434, back to Glimmer. Well, that's exactly the same. So Glimmer and F genes B predicted those exactly the same. 3446 to 3898, exactly the same. And 3915 to 4454, exactly the same. So there's some overlap in the predictions. So they are not perfect, but typically when bacterial genomes are sequenced for the first time, one of the first steps is to run gene prediction to predict where the protein coding regions are located and to help quickly annotate that particular genome. That concludes this lesson. Please feel free to take genomic DNA from bacteria and run these algorithms.